So there's Brooke Shields. <laughs> she was in our social square, a little shocked perhaps by her own book. It's called There Was a Little Girl, and Brooke really wants to set the record straight about her life. Her mom, who the first celebrity, well, she was the first celebrity momager, I think. The title, sort of that, oh, that word was used, and uh, often public, publicly criticized for the career choices that she made for her young daughter, and we want to say welcome to you. Thank you. Been a Thank long time much. since we've spoken. The I last know. time I talked to you, I think right here, was about your, uh, your book about postpartum depression. Yeah. It, was, uh, it was the first book I, I penned, and this is the next one, and it's, uh, it's a little, it's funnier. Yes. <laughs> this one's a little funnier. Yeah. Well, that was, Although but, there was humor in that one, too, but. And I was saying, there's just such an, a brutal honesty um, a, a, to your words, uh, and, and, and you. beautifully written, but uh, you say right off the bat that, that you felt you, like you had to read this after reading your mom's obituary. And, and that story is really remarkable. It really is a, sort of a shocking story. And I, and I think that what it what had happened was, just for people who don't know everything about me, um, I wrote an obituary and then I was very much uh, misrepresented. When the obituary came out, it actually was nothing that I had written. Um, and what really just struck me was not just the vitriol with which it was sort of written against my mother, but that a woman had died and there was a daughter mourning and there was yeah. sort of no respect for that whatsoever. And I thought, why is that okay? Um, and then I just thought, you know what, it was my turn to tell my version and my truth, yeah. good and bad. And what was the goal here? So you said, I'm going to write this book. I'm going to set the story straight about Terry, my mom. There are so many stories out there. And did you accomplish what you set out to for yourself? I did. You know, I, I set out to show all of it. You know, with as was I like I said, the good, the bad, the complexity of a parent-child relationship. You know, we all we spend our lives running away from or running towards our mothers, yeah. and whether you have an amazing relationship or a distant one, or a, you know, um, there is a complexity there. Mm -hmm. And I mean, every Disney princess, the mom's dead in the first five seconds. Right. <laughs> you know, there's a re there's something in that archetypal relationship. Right. And, and you're and you're started very, very young. Eleven months old was your first commercial. I had a lot and to say about it, too. I said, listen, mom, uh, yeah. get it going <laughs> here. Come on. But 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 by 11, did you ha <laughs> even have enough of a voice then? Were you an old soul enough then to talk about Pretty Baby? Do you remember her sort of explaining to you the Louis Malle film and what you'd be playing this uh, child know, I, prostitute? I grew up in Manhattan. I mean, I went to school in, in Jersey, but I, I, I grew up up in the city when 42nd Street was a very different place mm -hmm. you know I was very cognizant of all of that but I think the thing that shaped me the most through all of it I mean it was a beautiful film I think to this day it's the most beautiful film I've been in um, and I lived with an alcoholic parent and I was an only child with her my mm -hmm. father had a whole other family and I was very close to them but that shaped me and so it actually became the larger character in our life, even in our lives together. And it even superseded Hollywood or all of the, the sort of pitfalls of that. And, and you are so frank about your mom and, and, and you do tell stories about missed Christmases, but you do say that there is there were positives and perhaps if she had not led the life she did, that you would not have had the incredible life that you have. And I do think that that is the story, uh, you know, that, that is uh, the golden, the, the silver lining, if you will. You do also talk about the men in your life and I was pretty surprised that you were uh, so revealing about Andre Agassi and your marriage because you did have a lot in common, but he shared shared a very dark secret with you that you've now shared in the book. Well, he shared about it in his book, too. Yes. So this, I was not, I, I have had and have the respect. I maintain my integrity <laughs> throughout. Mm -hmm. um, and I told my version of what we experienced and whenever my mother had something to do with it. You know, this was not sort of, believe me, I've got to tell all mm -hmm. and, and it will probably knock people's socks off and I may never write it, but um, these stories all, even about the the men, which sounds so. But it was know, all about her. her it was where how to she it. Affect, affected me within all of those relationships. So yeah. whether it was fear of losing my virginity because I felt like somehow she would know, or I mean, I think the the, the appealing part of these sort of unbelievably larger than life characters, these alcoholics, these addicted people, these fabulous, is that they have that 
appeal, you mm -hmm. know, and they're beguiling. And it's also, it's all that. I mm -hmm. mean, and it affected my relationships. I mean, Andre was one of the best parts of my life. I mean, he helped me sort of uh, disengage from my mother in as healthy, healthily as possible. And you are so honest about it in <laughs> it's here. Pretty it's pretty brutally, really, it's funny it's very too. Frank. It's sort of ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, ridiculous. There's and, and, parts and, that you cannot believe, you know. And it's out tomorrow, everybody. The name of the book is There Was a Little Girl. And again, in stores tomorrow by the one and only Brooke Shields. Thank you so Thanks. much for sharing. Thanks. So good to Thanks see you. Thanks for caring. Of course. <laughs>